trigeminal autonomic cephalgia. The important parts, number one, it has to be trigeminal, V1, V2, V3. Number two, it has to have autonomic dysfunction, not like the autonomic dysfunction of migraine, which is nausea and vomiting, sonophobia and photophobia, but instead autonomic, meaning tearing of the eye, conjunctival injection, and they might have a Horner syndrome. And number three, it's a headache, cephalgia, which is what that means. So anybody who has cephalgia, a headache, in the trigeminal distribution, you must address this autonomically. And it comes to us in ophthalmology because eye pain, cephalgia, they feel it in their eye, and the autonomic dysfunction, tearing and conjunctival injection. And it might be an autonomic dysfunction called a Horner syndrome. And even though they have names, they're the short-acting ones, short-acting unilateral neuralgia form and conjunctival tearing, SOMT and SUNA. If you take away the conjunctival injection and the tearing, that is the same thing, SUNA. Short-acting means seconds, but you have many hundreds of episodes. Then if you have the same thing, a trigeminal autonomic cephalgia, but it's paroxysms, and it's hemicranial, one side only, moderate duration, moderate frequency, minutes at a time, and multiple episodes. That thing is called paroxysmal hemicrania. And then if you have clusters, less frequent episodes, but um, the duration might be minutes to hours, that thing is called cluster headache. And that one, they pace around, more likely to be men, more likely to be triggered by... Uh, alcohol and also might be alleviated by movement, which is the opposite of migraine. And if it's continuous and hemicranial, we call that hemicrania continua. But they're all tax. It's just a matter of duration and frequency. So the more frequent and the shorter they are, the more likely they are to be the short acting ones. The medium frequency and medium duration pH, paroxysmal hemicrania, and cluster headache, CH. And if it's long-lasting but one episode only, continuous, that is hemicrania continua. The reason it's important is paroxysmal hemicrania and hemicrania continuum, part of their diagnostic criteria include the use of indomethacin, and a single dose might make it go away completely. In the past, the eponym Sluder neuralgia was used to refer to the tack that affects the superficial, uh, greater superficial petrosal nerve and its input at the level of the sphenopalatine ganglion within the pterygopalatine fossa. And that thing is called Sluder, the eponym Sluder from 1908. And the reason that's important is you can reach the sphenopalatine ganglion, which is in the pterygopalatine fossa, with a block, either with lidocaine or just a cotton tip with lidocaine on it can reach the sphenopalatine ganglion at the level of the pterygopalatine fossa and could block the autonomic dysfunction at that level, the Sluder neuralgia. So you need to know as an eye doctor, trigeminal autonomic cephalgias because they come to us with eye pain and they might present with short acting tearing and conjunctival injection, sunk, medium duration and medium frequency, pH, paroxysmal hemocrania and cluster, they might have a Horner syndrome, image the entire axis if you see that, and it's going to be involving the eye on V1, but V2, and so that means sometimes the patients feel the pain in their teeth, which is the superior alveolar nerve. And so the key in differentiating features, it is hemicranial and autonomic cephalgia, and you need to know it can come to the eye doctor.